Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to this very, very first TEDx Breda. I've actually, I've lived in the Netherlands for 20 years, and I've never come to Breda. Can you believe it? It's beautiful here, isn't it? Yeah, they have, uh, they have live chickens in the, in the park. It's amazing. Um, TED, as all of you know, I'm sure, is about ideas worth spreading, ideas that enrich people's lives, and we have a very, very enriching day for you today. My name is Jonathan Gruber. I'm the host of a radio show called The State We're In from Radio Netherlands Worldwide. Um, and I'm your host for today, too. This is very important. I mean, the speakers who are coming here today are here to spread ideas. And that means that in the breaks, feel free to approach them. Talk to them about their ideas. Introduce yourself to them. Share. That's very important. And when you come back in, think about this. It might be a good idea to change seats. Sit down to somebody different from who you would normally sit down to. Speak with that person. Talk to them. Get interested. That is what TED is all about. Now, the theme of TEDx Breda is remix your reflex. Now, that sounds snappy, but what exactly does that mean? It means this. It means impartiality. It means taking a moment to turn off your preconceptions, to try and look at the world objectively. It means taking a moment to see the world in a completely different way, with brand new eyes, unprejudiced. Um, now, I make a radio program, and I have conversations with people all around the world. And one of the things that I find most interesting about making this kind of a show, in which I speak to people from cultures from everywhere on the planet, is the fact that I ask almost the same questions over and over again. And what this says to me is that we are, in fact, very much the same. So, I'd like to start off with uh, a story that I think sort of exemplifies this idea of what we're trying to do today. And the story is called Two Enemies, One Heart. And let me start off with two words that I think play right into most people's preconceived notions. And those two words are Iran and Iraq. So, it works. Um, if I say Iran and Iraq to you, I think immediately you come up with uh, with certain thoughts in your head. You might think fundamentalism, you might think terrorism, you might think intolerance, you might think war. And you'd probably be right to think all of those things. But at the same time, you need to look at it differently too. Let me start off with two other words. And those words are Naja and Zahed. Now, what most people don't realize is that in the 80s, Iraq and Iran fought an eight-year-long war. It was a, probably the worst conventional war that's happened in the 20th century after the Second World War. Um, a, a million and a half people died during this war. And uh, one of the worst battles was a place called Khodamshar. The Iraqis had invaded Khodamshar. Uh, the Iranians were determined to free it. And uh, so what they did was, is they massed an army there, they broke the dam, they literally washed out the entire Iraqi army, and then they followed it up with uh, howitzer and grenade attacks, and they just wiped out the Iraqi army. Now, Naja was an Iraqi man who was conscripted into Saddam Hussein's army. He left his wife and his child behind, and he went to fight. And he was mortally wounded during this battle. He was hit by a grenade. He uh, crawled him all the way over to a bunker, and he fell onto a pile of corpses and waited for death to come. Zahed was somebody who volunteered for the Iraqi army, but he was a medic, actually. But he was told that he had to go into all of these bunkers. He had to find living Iraqis and kill them and drag them out and bury them and bury out the dead. So he's out there. He's doing his job. And he goes into one of these bunkers, and he sees a pile of corpses, and he thinks everyone there is dead. And then suddenly, as he's walking out with his flashlight on, he hears something. Naja sees a beautiful young man. Yeah, he's a rock. He's being taken prisoner. He sees a beautiful young man, Zahed. Yeah, he thinks he's an angel. He's coming with this light. So he points to his breast pocket. And Zahed kneels down and he pulls out of his breast pocket a Koran. And in this Koran is a picture of a young woman and a child. And Zahed thinks of his orders that he has to actually kill this man. And he thinks to himself, he 
thinks to himself, what is humanity? I hold this man's life in my hands. Do I kill him or do I save him? Is humanity something real or is it meaningless? And he decides he's going to save him. So he fixes him up as best he can. He puts corpses on top of him. He waits three days. He brings him to his sergeant. They take him as a prisoner of war. Zahed knows this man will die without medical care. He convinces a surgeon to save him. The surgeon saves him. And then as uh, Naja is recuperating, Zahed goes over to him in the hospital. Zahed sees that he's feeling much better. Naja realizes this is his angel. He takes his hand and he kisses it. Zahed is overcome with emotion. and He bends down and he kisses Naja on the head. Then Naja is taken away where he is made a prisoner of war for 17 years. He is starved, he is beaten every day. At the end of the 17 years, two men come, they beat him up, they put him on a bus, they bring him back to Iraq where he's told that the war is over. So he tries to go to his family, his wife and child are gone. Despairing, not knowing what to do, he calls up uh, a cousin and he moves to Vancouver, Canada to start over. Things have not gone much better for Zahed. Zahed is about to get married. On the day that he's getting married, an Iraqi air raid comes and kills his wife-to-be. Zahed, this compassionate man, loses all compassion. He becomes a killing machine. He decides that he's going to kill as many Iraqis as he possibly can, and he gets very, very good at it. And then one hour before the war is about to end, he gets captured. He gets sent to an Iraqi camp where he spends the next two years being starved and beaten. When he comes back, everybody thinks he's dead. He's standing over his own gravestone. He kicks it over and goes completely mad. He is incapable of functioning in society. He becomes very, very violent. And he uh, uh, finds himself, after not being able to hold down a job for a long time, he finds himself um, joining the Iranian merchant marines. Now, the Iranian Merchant Marines is a little bit like uh, the Soviet Union. You know, they used to have political officers to keep everybody in line, make sure everybody was socialistic. In the Iranian Merchant Marines, it's the same thing. They have religious officers. And Zahed has no use for this in his life. He beats him up to within an inch of his life. And he knows that if he comes back to Iran, they are going to arrest him. They are going to arrest him. So he jumps ship at the port of Vancouver, Canada. He is not able to find himself in Vancouver. He tries to commit suicide. And then eventually, after that failed, of course, he finds himself sitting in the waiting room of uh, a therapy center for people who have suffered from torture. And sitting across from him in this waiting room is a Middle Eastern looking man. So he says to him in Persian, excuse me, you look like you might be Iranian. Are you Iranian? And the man says back to him, heavily accented Arabic. Persian. Uh, no, no, I'm not actually. I actually am from Iraq. Oh, I said, uh, why do you speak Persian? Well, I was in the war and then I was in a prisoner of war. And uh, they start talking about where they fought and they get to Khorramshire. And then Zahed says, I have a very special memory of Khorramshire. I saved an Iraqi soldier there. And the other man says, I was saved by an Iranian soldier. And they start testing each other's story and the details start matching up. And the next thing you know, they're shouting at each other and they're jumping up and down. People think they're having an argument and that they're fighting until they start crying. And then they start hugging each other. And then they start kissing each other. And Naja says, you're my angel. You're the angel. And Zahed says, you're the reason why I'm still alive for this moment. You have saved me now. And I can tell you now that for these two men, this is the way they look today, Zahed and Naja. They now say that they live for each other, that they were once two enemies who now share one heart, and that's the story. Thank you.